today I'm with Jay from Volunteer Audio and my street glide is about to get an upgrade. About to get these speakers out from Harley Davidson and get some stuff done. You know, if you watched that video last time, you remember that uh, Jay here was telling me that he had some plans for my bike. So what do you have planned for today? All right, so we took some time, we've read through your comments. Uh, Tall has decided to keep his radio. He has the factory Harley GTS radio. It has Apple CarPlay, it has Android Auto, it has Mac, it has most of the features that someone would want. Uh, we're going to try to take care of the problems though. So we don't have good type bass, our high range, our treble is very lacking, and we don't have nearly enough volume. He said very lacking guys, it's horrible. <laughs> we don't have any bass and, the, and the, it, it, the high range is horrible. But anyway, I'm sorry, okay. So we're gonna add an amplifier from Hertz. We're gonna do some Hertz Neo front speakers. And we're gonna investigate, do we need a DSP? We saw a lot of comments saying that we would need one. Right. So we've got our RTA over here. We're gonna take some measurements. We're gonna reflash the radio, see if that fixes it. But at the end of the day, we're gonna have an awesome stereo. Okay, sounds good. And guys, we do listen. Listen, I read every comment and uh, you guys were telling me about the DSP. So he's gonna show you if we need a DSP or not by hooking it up to the computer and running a test. Uh, so guys, let me, let me just let you hear it. Now you have that device over yeah. So I'm going to use an SPO meter and we're going to take a before measurement of this audio system. See what the highest SPO we currently can put out and then when we get done we'll retest because it's hard to see or hear this difference right. on a YouTube video. Yeah, definitely. definitely. So, okay guys, and don't judge me, I'm going to be using copyright free music. Uh, it's not the best sound of music, but it's copyright free, you have to use it for YouTube. So here we go, let's turn this on. <laughs> Now that is about capital. Alright, let's, let's take it off and see what we get. Now that's what we're not doing from the top. Alright, so you know, we've uh, got a mic set up and it's on a whole feature, so it's going to only keep the highest measurement. We actually only got 92.4 dB. Now, Tom, when you were talking a few minutes ago, I saw 97 dB just from you talking. So this this factory audio is very very lacking. This so is an understatement. So what you're saying is I'm louder than my stereo. You are. So I guess I'm a loud now. <laughs> I just hit 92 six. Okay. I, I guess I do talk loud. Anyway, like, hearing this exhaust in the Harley, you you learn to talk loud and talk over there. But all right. So what we're gonna do next? Uh, we're gonna start by pulling the fairing. We're gonna plug in a harness so we can get some readings and see do we need an RT, do we need a DSP okay. to break these signals from the stock radio. Okay. Alright, so let me get out of the way. Alright, so first we're gonna remove this uh, outer fairing. Uh, it's just some T25 cork screws, not too hard, two on each side, three across the top of the windshield, then we'll take it off. Uh, let's get going on it. So we've got a GoPro mount on this one we're going to unscrew. Normally it's just a, a Torx screw there. Move this side. Have you hold the bottom and move this to the front. We're going to unplug the main Harley connector. We actually have a harness that tees in here to add on our amplifier, but it's also going to give us a good source to pull that factory signal, feed it through our RTA, and see if we need a DSP or if there's anything we need to correct. Okay, so by doing this, we're not going to cut any wiring in the bike. That's very, very important if you have a warranty, because Harley is one of the few companies that will void your warranty if you cut any of the wires. So, now, I don't think Tall got much of a warranty left with all his upgrades, but <laughs> we're going to make sure if you do this, we, we don't want to make sure that we cause any future problems or issues at the dealership. Alright, so having this harness plugged in is going to give us our input and output wires for our amplifier. 
Now, at Volunteer Audio, we're gonna fabricate this harness already made into an HMP40 amplifier. You can order it from us, and all this work will already be done. So basically what you're saying is, only thing I'll have to, if I, once you, once I order from you, all I have to do is connect it to this and be ready to go. Well, you're gonna plug it in here. Uh, we're also going to have to connect uh, a couple other harnesses if we have rear harness, uh, rear speakers. Uh -huh. On yours, it's gonna be, yeah, this is gonna be completely plug and play done. Uh, we're gonna run power from our battery up, plug this in, mount our amp, and we're gonna be good to go. Sounds good. Okay, Dave, so what do we got going on? All right, so we've hooked up our audio control RTA to the bike. I'm playing a pink noise track. So what pink noise is, for the people who don't know, it is a, it sounds like static if you're listening to it, but it's all the frequencies played at the same time, at the same level. So ideally, this graph, which is showing our frequencies of our audio, would be flat. If it was flat, we would have the same source as if we replaced the radio with, say, a Sony radio. So there's a few things Harley's done here that people don't take into account. So a lot of people say, use a DSP. With a DSP, I can grab each one of these frequencies and I can adjust them up and down by boosting the signal or taking the signal away. So on your particular bike with this GTS radio and it's flashed factory for just two speakers and no amp, we have a pretty flat range from 200 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So that's the vocals of most, most female singers all the way up into our treble and our cymbals. Now as we come down from that though, when we get to 160 hertz, we see a slight bump. At 125 hertz to 50 hertz, we have this huge boost that Harley's done to give you more mid bass. Now, 50 is almost in the sub bass range and we've got these small factory six and a halfs. So that's why it's so distorted at higher volumes on this factory system. So what we're gonna, if we just use the DSP, which a lot of people say we want a DSP, we gotta take into account something else. So Harley's boosted this bass, but we're sitting here and our motor's not running. They're pretty smart. They know when it's running and they change this EQ curve. So as soon as we fire the bike up and it's running, we get a completely different curve here. So if I hook the DSP up and I went through all the process of boosting this and turning this down, we made it beautiful here. When you fire your bike up and you go to leave, it's all gonna be messed up because we're gonna boost different areas and change it. So what we found though, is if we take the techno research tuner and we reprogram the factory radio as if we had the boom audio system with two amps, it gets rid of this big peak. We don't have to use a DSP, which simplifies the installation greatly. Um, and it gives us, and it also turns off this EQ change when we run our bike. So the Boom Audio 2 amp system sounds good sitting still and going down the road. So let's flash the bike, we'll redo this, and we'll see how big a change that does. All right, good. All right so we just got to see how bad that factory radio was on a graph. Uh, I'm going to flash this stock radio now to as if you had the Harley Boom Audio system. But I'm going to do the one that has two amps, and we're going to specifically pick that one because it does away with that uh, DSP change inside the radio between running and not running. We're going to do this, and we're going to see what our results are. Let's flash it here. So it's connected to our bike. All right, so it says pass. We're going to go through an ignition cycle process, disconnect from the ECM and let's retest this radio. All right, Tal, so we just took our techno research tuner and we flashed our radio. These are our results. So I turned on our rear speakers and that seems to be functioning fine. But if you look at this RTA graph, this is great from 80 hertz to 160 hertz. Where we were before, we really had this large peak and we were gonna have a hard time adjusting that out. We have this good, relatively flat curve, slightly boosted in the vocal range, which is, it's gonna be fine, it's gonna sound good going down the road. This is without a DSP. We also made it where when we start our bike up, we're gonna get these same results. So now if we wanted a little more bass or a little more high, which both are you know slightly down, all we have to do is adjust that on our radio. So there's no need for a DSP is what you're saying. In this in this case, there's no need for a DSP. So I've seen a lot of people say you need a DSP. And I don't know if everybody understands exactly what it's for. A DSP's job is to correct a bad signal. Okay, so we're trying to correct something because our amplifier is going to amplify that signal. So if it's bad, we're amplifying something really bad. <laughs> it would have been way worse if we left it alone. But with the DSP, it requires special tools like you see here in RTA to be able to see what we've done with our DSP. Uh, it also requires somebody to have pretty in-depth knowledge on how to adjust one. Uh, we can make a car sound amazing with a DSP and there are definitely bikes that do need them.
But with this new GTS radio, as long as we flash it to the boom two amp system, I think this is a great result. So I'm just, this my information, it may have been the older GTS that might be needed. You know, what we have seen is if, we'll, if we're willing to flash the radio, we end up with a pretty good straight curve. We're never going to get a lot of bass in the range where the factory radio is already trying to boost it. Um, but there are people that use DSPs and sound off competitions to boost the signal into the amps because we're running multiple amplifiers, bigger batteries. But the average rider, this is going to sound wonderful. And we're not going to have to worry about a DSP going bad. We don't need extensive knowledge and how to tune it. And I can ship a product that sounds great to the customer. Now, let's also talk about the fact we just used this re Techno Research tuner and we flashed it. This is a thousand plus dollar tool. Not everybody has that. We have a flash tool that we sell that, from Kicker that's much less expensive, just one time use. But with our amplifier, I'll show you here shortly when we install it, we can actually turn on some filters that would filter out that big bass spike that we have on this GTS radio. So we can still get a great result without having to spend all this money. But I hope this answers some questions beyond just we saw somebody use a DSP. And why would we use a DSP? So it's there to fix a problem. Right. Currently, we don't have a problem. Okay, sounds good to me.